Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Honorable and respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We continue from the book, The Sublime Messenger, and we've reached chapter number six, which is all about sending durood and salam upon the best of creation, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hence why it is called Invocation of Durood and Salam. The entire chapter revolves around this famous verse of the Quran. Mentioned in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 56, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا What does this mean? Indeed, إِنَّ اللَّهَ Indeed, Allah وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ and His angels يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي They send salat, they send blessings upon the Prophet. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe, sallu alayhi. You send salutations, you send blessings upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallimu taslima, and you send peace in abundance upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You send salutations of peace in the best possible manner upon the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does it mean when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah sends salat? He sends durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That the angels send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And that the believers send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam An important point to note is that durood is actually a Farsi, a Persian word And if you translate it into Arabic, then it means tahiyya Tahiyya, if you translate it into English, means greetings or salutations So, in reality Durood and Salat mean the same thing, where they mean blessings and salutations and greetings. So for the purpose of this presentation, Durood and Salat will be used synonymously. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this means that he showers his mercy upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that he praises the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of the angels. And this is mentioned in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari. Then, وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ The angels send salat, they send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This means that they pray to Allah to shower blessings upon the best of creation, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is mentioned in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari. What does it mean that the believers send durood? What does it mean when we send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then this means that O oh Allah we ask you we ask you to raise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's remembrance in this world where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ and we have raised for you your remembrance Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have raised for you your dhikr so we are making dua to Allah that O oh Allah continue raising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's remembrance in this world we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that grant the religion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prevalence إِظْهَارُ دَعْوَتِهِ That grant the religion, grant that which he came with, that call that he came with, grant that prevalence and prominence. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh Allah, allow the sharia, allow the laws which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with to continue and, O oh Allah, when we send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are asking Allah that, O oh Allah, accept the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter on the day of judgment for his ummah. And we also ask, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah raise the status raise the glory of the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam by further increasing his reward so in just a, a few short words in the durood and salat that we send upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam constantly every single day it is actually such a comprehensive dua that we are asking for all of these things just by simply sending one durood and one salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and this one has been mentioned by Ibn Manzoor in Lisanul Arab. The next subsection is about the types of durood. So in some cases you should send durood, in some cases you should not send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So now we'll analyze those cases in a bit more detail. So number one is when it is fard to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is once in a person's lifetime. And this is so that you can act upon the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi that all you who believe send salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so to act upon that a person must send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at least once in his or her lifetime secondly number two is when it is wajib it is necessary to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is when the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned and you hear the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then it is wajib to honor and to respect the name of the Rasul alayhi salatu wa sallam by sending salat and by sending durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the question may be posed that let's say you are in a gathering and the speaker has, is mentioning the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many times so is it wajib, is it necessary to send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every single time so there's one opinion as mentioned by Imam Tahawi that it is wajib to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every single time so every single time even if you are in the same gathering you hear the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is necessary and it is wajib to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the second opinion is that the first time you hear the name of the Rasul alayhi salatu was salam in a gathering then it is wajib to send durood upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and every other time after the first time it is mustahab it is recommended to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the benefit of this opinion is is that if a person does not send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the first time then he doesn't become sinful he doesn't incur any sin and this second opinion has been mentioned in Bahari Shari'at which has been published by al Maktabatul Madina with reference to Fatawa Ridawiya who then mentions and quotes other books and other scholars such as Muhaqqiq ala al-Iqlaq Kamal ibn Humam Rahimahullahu ta'ala The third type of durood is when it is Sunnah to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and going back to the previous point each time the name of the Rasul alayhi salatu wa sallam is taken it doesn't befit the one who has intellect and the one who is who knows about the fada'il and knows about the benefits of sending durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to leave sending durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the third type of durood is when it is sunnah so when you are in the prayer it is sunnah to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now we have different types of prayers some are fard, some are wajib, some are sunnah mu'akkada until the end so it is sunnah to send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the last sitting in a fard prayer and in a wajib prayer so in qa'ida akhira it is sunnah to send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a fard and wajib prayer and in a sunnah mu'akkada prayer as for in a nafil prayer then it is sunnah to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every single sitting so not only the final sitting but also any sittings in between which may be the second 
or the fourth. And the last uh, prayer in which it is sunnah to send durood and salat upon the best of creation, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is in the funeral prayer, in the janazah prayer. When is it mustahab? When is it recommended for one to send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then this is in most times and most in most places. Whenever you get a chance, you should be sending durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So some explicit examples are when you enter and when you leave the mosque at the beginning and at the end of a dua because a durood is something we'll do it later as well. Durood is something which is 100% accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if he accepts the beginning and the end then it does not befit the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he doesn't accept that which is in the middle. So sending the rood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before and after you make dua is something which is highly recommended. When you forget something, mention the name of the Rasul alayhi salatu wa and through his blessings, inshallah, that lost thing will be found. And whenever you're lecturing, you're learning, you're teaching, you're studying, continuously send the rood upon the best of creation, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you'll see through the blessings of his name, that there will be many blessings in your own work and in your own studies. So these were the cases of when you should send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we'll start when you shouldn't send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's makru to send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when you are not in the sitting position in prayer. So in any other position apart from when you are sitting, it would be makru to send Durood and Salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the namaz, in the prayer. And we've been through the detail as to when it is sunnah to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i.e. in which sitting position depending on which namaz it is and which type of salah it is. And to not say it in the janazah prayer, in the funeral prayer is also makruh. The final type is when it is prohibited when it is totally unlawful and it's haram, it's impermissible to send durood and salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So previously we mentioned that when you're lecturing, when you're studying, when you're going to do something good or when you are doing something good, it is recommended to send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you're about to do something which is haram, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. But if somebody was about to do that and a haram act, then it would be haram upon that person to take the name of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by sending durood and salat upon him. This subsection is about durood Ibrahimi, durood Ahlul Bayt. How did this durood, this famous durood, how did they get these names? So firstly, durood Ibrahimi, the name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam has been mentioned in this durood, hence why it is called durood Ibrahimi. And it's a famous durood where which we recite in every single prayer which goes by Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahima wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahima innaka hamidu majid Allahumma barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahima wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahima innaka hamidu majid which means O oh Allah Send mercy upon our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon the family of our master just as you sent blessings and mercy upon Sayyidina Ibrahim and his family indeed you are most worthy of praise indeed you are the most exalted O oh Allah send blessings upon our leader Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon the family of Sayyidina Muhammad just as you send blessings upon Sayyidina Ibrahim and upon the family of Sayyidina Ibrahim indeed you are most worthy of praise indeed you are the most exalted so this durood how did it come about Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Ujra radiyallahu ta'ala an he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ya Rasulullah we know how to send salam upon you when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا and send salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we know how to do that but Ya Rasulullah how do we send durood upon you 
And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he responded by mentioning this durud. And this has been mentioned in the Sahih of Imam Nasai. The second bit, which is Durudu Ahlil Bayt. Why is it known as Durudu Ahlil Bayt? So Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Ujra radiyallahu ta'ala an, he went to Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla and he asked him that should I not share a gift with you which I heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Sayyidina Abdul Rahman he said of course why not share that gift with me so Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Ujra radiyallahu ta'ala an, he says that I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us how to give salam upon you he has told us how to give salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but how do we say durood upon the Ahlul Bayt? How do we send Salat upon the Ahlul Bayt? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned this durood Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid till the end and this is mentioned in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari You may have noticed that we add the word Sayyidina before the name of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and before the name of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and this means our master, our leader and this is something which in actual fact, in reality the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam are our leaders, are our masters and therefore to add these words as a mark of respect, as a mark of adab is something which is permissible which we are allowed to do Hence why we add the word Sayyidina before the names of the Prophets alayhi musalam. We now move on to the final part of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمَ and send salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does that mean? What is the essence of salam? One of the meanings of Islam is to submit i.e. to submit to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to submit to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Similarly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمَ This means that you need to accept each and every ruling of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To submit to each and every ruling of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with your heart So wholeheartedly accepting each and every ruling of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Also it also means to supplicate and to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send mercy upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to increase the reward of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to pray for his peace and to pray for the well-being of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So we've been told to send salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We've been told to send mercy and peace upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but how did the noble companions how did the sahaba kiram ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in send salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the first one is assalamu alayka ya nabiyyullah and this has been narrated to us by sayyidina ali ibn abi talib karramallahu ta'ala wajhahu al-kareem where he says every day in the early hours of the morning I would come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how would I greet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says I would used to, I used to say assalamu alayka ya nabi allah peace be upon you o prophet of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is mentioned in the sunan of imam nasai radiyallahu ta'ala an the second one this is where the noble companions they would refer to and they would send salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying as-salatu was salamu alayka ya rasulullah blessings and peace be upon you O messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this has been mentioned by Imam Khafaji in Naseem al-Riyad the third one has been narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma where he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself said that when any one of you is in the sitting position when any one of you is in qa'ida in prayer in namaz then you should say at-tahiyyatu lillahi 
والصلوات والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله meaning التحيات لله that all forms of worship which are performed by our tongue by way of the tongue والصلوات by the body والطيبات and all forms of worship which are performed by our with our wealth are for lillahi are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assalamu alayka ayyuha nabiyu salam peace be upon you O Prophet wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and the mercy of Allah and his blessings be upon you O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin peace be upon us and peace be upon the pious and righteous servants of Allah ashadu an la ilaha illallah I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant his great servant and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we know that we should send salam upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in tashahud by saying assalamu alayka ayyuha nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh but how should we actually send that salam is it just uh, some mere words that we are recollecting about how those words came about or is there something deeper to that and so the author mentions that the real and true meanings of this salam and the entire tashahud should be present in our heart and in our mind and when, when it comes to salam then actually believe that you are sending tokens of praise and glorification you are sending greetings of salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and at the same time you are praying for peace for yourself and for the angels and for the believers as well and this is we mentioned in the Hashia of Allama ibn Abidin rahimahullahu ta'ala and Imam Ghazali rahimahullahu ta'ala he says that when you actually give salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually believe and actually bring the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be present at the core of your heart actually believe wholeheartedly that you are indeed sending durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being present in your heart and then saying assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh O Prophet peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you this is the end of part 1 of chapter number 6 inshallah stay tuned and do like subscribe and share so you don't miss part 2 and when that is uploaded and when that is released if you have benefited from this in any way shape or form then please do share it with others so others can also benefit by sending durood in abundance upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and if there is any feedback or any questions that you have please approach us and contact us on our social media platforms there will be a link in the description to those I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to continuously send durood upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and send salam upon the best of creation Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in abundance and with sincerity and with love Ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen